Who are the Cushitic people? History of the Cushitic people. Hello, this is Welcome to another interesting video presented to you by the Explorer. In this video, we shall look at the history of the Cushitic people. The Cushitic people or Cushite are a group of people who are primarily indigenous to Northeast Africa, along the Nile Valley and Horn of Africa, who speak or have historically spoken Cushitic languages of the afro asiatic language family. Peoples of substantial Cushitic ancestry and native speakers of Cushitic languages are primarily found in the Horn of Africa, in countries such as Djibouti, Eritrea, Ethiopia and Somalia, as well as the Nile Valley like Sudan and Egypt, and parts of the African Great Lakes region with Tanzania and Kenya. Some examples of ethnic groups who strictly speak Cushitic languages and have not undergone a language shift are the Oromo, Somali, Beja, Agao, Afar, Saho and Sidama. In this video, we shall dissect through their origin and how their nomadic lifestyle led to the spread of this unique group across several parts of the continent. But first, if you are new here, welcome. Be sure to subscribe and turn notifications so you don't miss any of our videos. History the exact ethnogenesis of Cushitic peoples is still being researched. However, many Cushitic populations can be paternally traced back to having ethnic origins in the Nile Valley and the Red Sea region of the Horn of Africa. Archaeological evidence and linguistic evidence gathered from toponyms and ancient Egyptian records suggest that earliest evidence of Cushitic speech is not found where the language family is most predominant today, but in the region of Sudan. Other linguists consider the Horn of Africa to be the original homeland of the proto afro asiatic language, as it is considered the region the afro asiatic language family displays the greatest diversity, a sign often viewed to represent a geographic origin. Cushitic populations most likely formed and started migrating out of the Nile Valley in prehistory. Las Gil, ancient cave paintings in northern Somalia, attest to the first signs of a population believed to be ancestral to the afro asiatic speakers in the Horn of Africa. In an excellent state of preservation, the rock art depicts wild animals and decorated cattle like cows and bulls. They also feature headers, possibly pastoral nomads who are the creators of the paintings. By the 5th millennium BC, the people who inhabited prehistoric Sudan participated in the Neolithic Revolution. The domestication of animals usually numbered among the Neolithic package, brought on by the advent of agriculture. Nubian rock reliefs depict scenes that seem to be suggestive of the same cattle cult, typical of those seen throughout parts of Northeast Africa and the Nile Valley. By the 5th millennium BC, Protokushis who inhabited what is now Sudan likely participated in the Neolithic Revolution, which allowed for the domestication of animals by sedentary groups who were previously cultivators. Donkeys were probably first domesticated by pastoral people in Nubia, the ancestors of the modern-day donkey being the Nubian and Somali subspecies of African wild ass. Puntland and the Somaliland regions of Somalia is home to numerous such archaeological sites and megalithic structures, with similar rock art found at Hat, Gudmo Biokas, Dambalin, Daga Marudi and numerous other sites. However, many of these old structures have yet to be properly explored a process which would help shed further light on local history and facilitate their preservation for posterity. The Cushitic people are primarily found in East Africa, the Horn of Africa, Sudan and South Africa, and they all receive this population from their nomadic lifestyle, as we will discover. East Africa Archaeological and linguistic evidence suggests that Cushitic speakers dominated significant areas of East Africa before the Bantu expansion in 1000 BC to 1 AD. Evidence indicates two ancestral groups, which are Mediterranean Caucasoid and the Negroid or the early Nilotic groups. This population is thought to have been responsible for the stone monoliths, walled enclosures, irrigation systems and other related prehistoric cultural remains found in East Africa. According to archaeological dating of associated artifacts and skeletal material, the Kushites first settled in the lowlands of Kenya, a phase referred to as the lowland savanna pastoral Neolithic. These herding communities subsequently spread to the highlands of Kenya and Tanzania, which is consequently known as the highland savanna pastoral Neolithic phase. The southernmost groups of savanna pastoral Neolithic headers may have been responsible for the eventual spread of pastoralism to southern Africa. 
As genetic data shows a link between the savanna pastel Neolithic individual from Luxmanda, Tanzania and ancient herders in the Western Cape, South Africa. The Horn of Africa According to linguists, the Horn of Africa could possibly be the original homeland of the Proto-Afro-Asiatic language. As it is considered the region, the Afro-Asiatic language family displays the greatest diversity, a sign often viewed to represent the geographic origin. The land of Punt was an ancient kingdom and trading partner of Egypt, known for producing and exporting gold, aromatic resins, black wood, ebony, ivory and wild animals. The exact location of Punt is still debated by historians, but most scholars today believe Punt was situated to the southeast of Egypt, most likely in the coastal region of modern Djibouti, Somalia, northeast Ethiopia, Eritrea and the Red Sea littoral of Sudan. It is also possible that the territory covered both the Horn of Africa and Southern Arabia. At some point after the fall of Punt, or possibly running concurrently, begins evidence of a Semitic-speaking presence in Eritrea and Northern Ethiopia as early as 2000 BC. In the Classical era, the Macrobians who were a legendary people and kingdom positioned in the Horn of Africa were mentioned by Herodotus. They were reputed for their longevity and wealth and were said to be the tallest and handsomest of all men. The Macrobians were a regional power that were known from west to east and were highly advanced in architecture and extremely known for their wealth noted for gold which was so plentiful that the Macrobians shackled their prisoners in golden chains. After the introduction of Christianity, Judaism and Islam, the respective histories of the Cushitic populations diverged, forming various city-states, empires and sultanates. Sudan Nubia or Taseti was an ancient kingdom in northeastern Africa, extending approximately from the Nile Valley eastward to the shores of the Red Sea, including Egypt, southward to near Khartoum in now Sudan, and westward to the Libyan desert. Linguistic evidence indicates that in antiquity, people speaking Cushitic languages inhabited Lower Nubia, a region between the present-day southern Egypt and northernmost Sudan and that people speaking Nilo-Saharan languages of the Eastern Sudanic branch inhabited Upper Nubia to the south before the spread of Eastern Sudanic languages further north into Lower Nubia. South Africa Ancient South Cushitic speaking pastoralists hailing from East Africa migrated across Southeastern Africa and their presence is today marked by genetic evidence of their ancestry present in the modern-day ancestries of all sampled San and Co. The migration of these peoples introduced pastoralism to eastern and southern Africa during Savannah Pastoral Neolithic. Culture Cushitic people have a wide diversity of cultures that relate to them specifically, and as a group but as a whole, tends to vary between sedentary agrarianism and nomadic pastoralism. Kushites have been considerably influenced by Islam and to a somewhat lesser extent by Christianity with their main languages being the Cushitic languages and Ethiopian Semitic languages. The first century travel catalogue Periplus of the Eritrean Sea makes mention of nomads and settled cities in Barbara, which referred to two ancient regions in littoral northeast Africa. The two areas were inhabited by the Eastern Barbaroi or Bariba, Berbers or Barbarians. These inhabitants were the ancestors of today's local Cushitic speaking populations, such as Somalis and Bejas. Indeed, the deep history of the nomadic lifestyle is apparent in that humans likely first domesticated dromedaries in Somalia or introduced there shortly after domestication in South Arabia. Somalia has the largest camel population in the world and is home to the ancient Lasgill cave paintings depicting Somali nomads with their riches and livestock. Agriculture and Animal Husbandry Coffee is a major export of Ethiopia and was first discovered and cultivated by Oromos in the region of Kaffa in Ethiopia and were the first to recognize the energizing effect of the coffee plant. Coffee was then primarily consumed in the Islamic world from where it led to spread throughout the rest of the world. Coffee was even directly related to religious practices. For example, coffee helped its consumers fast in the day by helping them stay awake at night during the Muslim celebration of Ramadan. 82% of the world frankincense grows in Somalia, an industrial heritage of the ancient civilization of Punt, famed for its incense, centered in modern-day Eritrea, Djibouti, Somalia and Ethiopia, where frankincense was sold to the ancient Egyptians. Music Cushitic music uses a distinct modal system 
that is pentatonic, with characteristically long intervals between some notes. Taste in music and lyrics are strongly linked in the Horn of Africa, Sudan and parts of Egypt. Traditional singing presents diverse styles of polyphony or heterophony, drone, imitation and counterpoint. Traditionally, lyricism is associated with the recitation of poetry. Conclusion The Cushitic people are an interesting population, which constitute the majority of the population in the Horn of Africa, an area that is believed to be the location of dispersal of Cushitic speakers across most of East Africa. They primarily adhere to Islam and Christianity, with a small minority still practicing traditional beliefs and Judaism. The Somali language is the main and dominant Cushitic language recognized as an official language in Somalia, while the Oromo, Afar and Somali languages, along with two other non-Cushitic Afro-Asiatic languages of Amharic and Tigrinya, are recognized as co-official working languages of Ethiopia. In Djibouti, Afar and Somali are recognized as national languages, while the official languages of the state are Arabic and French, which are not Cushitic languages. The Kushites are culturally diverse, but unique in their portrayal of their culture, music, languages, with a common love for being nomads. There you have it, the explorers. That was a look at the Kushitic people. Thanks for watching this video. And if you did enjoy this video, do all to give it a thumbs up. Do not forget to subscribe and share with your friends.